The 2016 World Series was the championship series of Major League Baseball's MLB 2016 season. The 112th edition of the World Series, it was a best of seven playoff between the National League NI champion Chicago Cubs and the American League AL champion Cleveland Indians, the first meeting of those franchises in postseason history. The series was played between October 25 and November 2, although Game 7 ended slightly after 12 a.m. local time on November 3. The Indians had home field advantage because the AL had won the 2016 All-Star Game. This was the final World Series to have home field advantage determined by the All-Star Game results. Since 2017, home field advantage has been awarded to the team with the better record. The Cubs defeated the Indians four games to three to win their first World Series since 1908. Game 7, an 8–7 victory in 10 innings, marked the fifth time that a Game 7 had gone into extra innings and the first since 1997 which, coincidentally, the Indians also lost. It was also the first Game 7 to have a rain delay, which occurred as the tenth inning was about to start. The Cubs became the sixth team to come back from a 3–1 deficit to win a best of seven World Series, following the 1925 Pittsburgh Pirates, the 1958 New York Yankees, the 1968 Detroit Tigers, the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates, and the 1985 Kansas City Royals. The Cubs, playing in their 11th World Series and their first since 1945, won their third championship and first since 1908, ending the longest world championship drought in North American professional sports history. It was the Indians' sixth appearance in the World Series and their first since 1997, with their last series win having come in 1948. The two teams entered their matchup as the two franchises with the longest World Series title droughts, a combined 176 years without a championship. Cleveland manager Terry Francona, who had previously won World Series titles with the Boston Red Sox in 2004 and 2007, fell short in his bid to become the third manager to win his first three trips to the Fall Classic, after Casey Stengel and Joe Torre. Topic Background Topic Chicago Cubs The Cubs made their eleventh appearance in the World Series, their only previous two championships were in nineteen oh seven and nineteen oh eight. They lost their eight other appearances, in 1906, 1910, 1918, 1929, 1932, 1935, 1938, and 1945. The Cubs qualified for the postseason by winning the National League Central, ending the regular season with the best record in all of MLB 103 for the first time since 1945. They also posted their highest winning percentage since. 1935, and won their most games since 1910. The division title was their sixth since division play began in 1969, and their first since 2008. The Cubs entered the postseason as the number one seed in the National League, and they defeated the fifth-seeded San Francisco Giants 3–1 of the NI Division Series before clinching their first NI pennant since 1945 with a 4–2 series win over the third-seeded Los Angeles Dodgers in the NI Championship Series. For Cubs manager Joe Madden, it was his second appearance in the World Series as manager. In 2008, he managed the Tampa Bay Rays who lost 4–1 to the Philadelphia Phillies. It was also Madden's third World Series appearance overall. In 2002, he was bench coach for the Anaheim Angels. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland Indians. The Indians made their sixth appearance in the World Series. They won two championships in 1920 and 1948. 
they lost their three most recent appearances in the Fall Classic in 1954, 1995, and 1997. The Indians qualified for the postseason by winning the American League Central, their eighth division title and their first since 2007. The Indians were the number two seed in the American League, and they defeated the third-seeded Boston Red Sox 3–0 in the AL Division Series before clinching the pennant with a 4–1 victory over the fourth-seeded Toronto Blue Jays in the AL Championship Series. For Indians manager Terry Francona, it was his third appearance in the World Series. He won his previous two appearances 2004 and 2007 as manager of the Boston Red Sox, in sweeps of the St. Louis Cardinals and the Colorado Rockies. This was the third postseason meeting between Francona and Madden. Madden's Rays defeated Francona's Red Sox in the 2008 American League Championship Series, while Madden's Rays defeated Francona's Indians in the 2013 American League Wild Card Game. Summary Chicago won the series, 4–3. Game summaries Game 1 Former Indians and Cubs player Kenny Lofton threw the ceremonial first pitch before Game 1. Corey Kluber started for the Indians, and John Lester started for the Cubs. Kyle Schwaber, who had missed nearly all of the 2016 season after tearing ligaments in his leg in the season's fourth game, was added to the Cubs World Series roster and started as their designated hitter. Schwaber struck out twice, but also doubled and drew a walk. The double made Schwaber the first non pitcher to get his first hit of the season in the World Series. Kluber made World Series history by striking out eight hitters in the first three innings. Roberto Perez became the first ever ninth place hitter with two homers in a World Series game, the first Indians player to hit two homers in a series game, and the first Puerto Rican born player to hit two homers in a World Series game. In the first, the Indians loaded the bases off Leicester on a single and two walks before Jose Ramirez's single drove in a run, then Leicester hit Brandon Geyer with a pitch to force in another. Perez's home run in the fourth made it 3–0 Indians. In the eighth, Justin Grimm walked Geyer with two outs and allowed a single to Lonnie Chisenhall, then Hector Rondon allowed Perez's second home run of the night. Andrew Miller and Cody Allen finished the victory for the Indians despite Miller having to pitch out of a bases loaded jam in the seventh, and the Indians took Game 1 of the series 6–0. Francona's World Series winning streak reached nine with this victory. Leading off the first inning, Dexter Fowler became the first African American to play for the Cubs in a World Series. Game 2 Former Indians player Carlos Berger threw the ceremonial first pitch before Game 2. The start time for the game was moved up an hour, because of the possibility of heavy rain in the forecast. Looking to tie the series at one game apiece, the Cubs sent Jake Arrieta to the mound against the Indians' Trevor Bauer. The Cubs also featured six players under age 25 in the starting lineup, a postseason record. The Cubs started things off early as Chris Bryant singled in the first inning and Anthony Rizzo doubled to score Bryant and give the Cubs an early 1–0 lead. Arietta started well too, retiring the first two batters before walking back-to-back -back batters in the bottom of the first. However, Arietta got a fly-out to end the inning. The Cubs struck again in the third following a two-out walk by Rizzo and a single by Ben Zobrist. A single by Kyle Schwaber scored Rizzo from second and pushed the Cubs' lead to 2–0. Bauer was forced from the game in the fourth, and the Cubs struck again in the fifth. Rizzo walked again off Zach McAllister, and Zobrist tripled to plate Rizzo. 
Another run scoring single by Schwaber off Brian Shaw and a bases loaded walk by Addison Russell pushed the lead to 5 0. Arietta continued to pitch well, walking three batters but holding the Indians without a hit into the sixth inning. In the sixth, a double by Jason Kipnis ended the no hitter, moved to third on a ground out, and scored the lone Indians run of the game on a wild pitch by Arietta. Arietta allowed another single and was lifted for reliever Mike Montgomery. Both teams threatened in the seventh but could not score and, following a single by Mike Napoli in the bottom of the eighth, Araldus Chapman entered to finish the game for the Cubs. The win marked the Cubs' first World Series game victory since 1945 and tied up the series at one game all. The game marked Indians manager Terry Francona's first loss in ten World Series games. <laughs> game 3 For Game 3, former Cubs player Billy Williams threw the ceremonial first pitch before the start of the game, and Bill Murray sang, "'Take me out to the ball game' during the seventh inning stretch, to mark the Cubs' first World Series night game at home. Chicago pitcher Kyle Hendricks started against Cleveland pitcher Josh Tomlin. The game's only run came off a Coco Crisp single that scored Michael Martinez from third in the seventh inning. Josh Tomlin, Andrew Miller, Brian Shaw, and Cody Allen combined to shut out the Cubs. Allen earned his sixth postseason save as Javier Baez struck out swinging to end the game, leaving the tying and winning runs in scoring position. It was the fourth time in which the Cubs had lost in a shutout during the 2016 postseason. Game 4 For Game 4, former Cubs pitchers Greg Maddox and Ferguson Jenkins threw the ceremonial first pitches before the start of the game, and actor Vince Vaughn sang, "'Take me out to the ball game' During the seventh inning stretch, the Cubs struck first when Dexter Fowler doubled to lead off the first and scored on Anthony Rizzo's one-out single, but Kluber held them to that one run through six innings before Francona turned it over to the bullpen. In the second, Carlos Santana's led off home runoff Lackey tied the game, then, with two on, Kluber's RBI single put the Indians up 2–1. Chris Bryant committed two errors in that inning. Next inning, Jason Kipnis hit a lead-off double and scored on Francisco Lindor's single. In the sixth, Lonnie Chisenhall's sacrifice fly with two on-off Mike Montgomery made it 4–1 Indians. Next inning, Justin Grimm allowed a lead-off double and one out hit by pitch before being relieved by Travis Wood, who gave up a three-run home run to Kipnis put to the Indians ahead 7–1. The Cubs got one run back in the eighth, on a Dexter Fowler home run off Andrew Miller, which was the first run he gave up in the postseason. With the victory, the Indians were just one win away from a World Series championship. <laughs> Game 5 For Game 5, former Cubs star and Hall of Fame member Ryan Sandberg threw the ceremonial first pitch before the start of the game, and Eddie Vedder sang, "'Take me out to the ball game' during the seventh inning stretch. Jose Ramirez hit a home run for Cleveland in the second inning off John Lester, but the Cubs, facing elimination, scored three runs in the fourth inning off Trevor Bauer. Chris Bryant led off the inning with a home run. After Bryant's home run, Anthony Rizzo doubled and Ben Zobrist singled. Addison Russell's RBI single put the Cubs up 2–1. After Jason Hayward struck out, Javier Baez's bunt single moved Zobrist to third before David Ross's sacrifice fly made it 3–1 Cubs. The Indians cut their deficit to 3–2 off Leicester in the sixth on Francisco Lindor's RBI single that scored Rajai Davis from second base. With the tying run on second base in the seventh inning, Madden brought in Araldus Chapman, who threw two and two-thirds scoreless innings, earning his first save of the series and fourth overall in the postseason. Game 6. 
Topic <laughs> Game Six. The last living member of Cleveland's 1948 World Series championship team, Eddie Robinson, attended Game 6 at Progressive Field. Former Indians pitcher Dennis Martinez threw out the ceremonial first pitch before the game. The Cubs scored three runs in the first inning, all with two outs, on a Chris Bryant home run and a two run double by Addison Russell after two singles off Josh Tomlin. In the third inning, the Cubs loaded the bases on a walk and two singles off Tomlin, who was relieved by Dan Otero. Following the pitching change, Russell hit the 19th Grand Slam in World Series history to extend the Cubs' lead to 7–0. Russell's Grand Slam was the first in a World Series game since Paul Konerko of the Crosstown Chicago White Sox in 2005, as well as the first by a visiting player since Lonnie Smith in 1992. In the bottom of the fourth, Mike Napoli drove in Jason Kipnis, who doubled to lead off, with an RBI single to cut the deficit to 7–1. In the bottom of the fifth, Kipnis drove a ball over the left field wall for a home run to make it a 7–2 game. In the top of the ninth with a runner on and two outs, Anthony Rizzo hit a two-run home run to right to make it 9–2. In the bottom of the inning, Araldus Chapman allowed a lead-off walk to Brandon Geyer and was relieved by Pedro Strop, who threw a wild pitch to move Geyer to second and Roberto Perez's RBI single made it 9–3 Cubs with Perez thrown out at second for the second out. After Carlos Santana walked, Travis Wood relieved Strop and got Jason Kipnis to pop out to short to end the game and force a Game 7. Russell's six RBIs tied a World Series single game record. Arietta became the first NI starting pitcher to notch two road wins in a single World Series since Bob Gibson in 1967. Topic: <laughs> Game 7. Game 7 of the series would go down as a classic, with some calling it the greatest Game 7 in World Series history, comparing it to 1960, 1991 and 2001 for its drama and tension. Former Indians player Jim Tomei threw the ceremonial first pitch before the game. The pitching matchup was between MLB earned run average era champion Kyle Hendricks, who had started Game 3 for the Cubs, and Corey Kluber, who had won Games 1 and 4 and was pitching on three days rest. Kluber came into the game 4–1 in the postseason with a 0.89 era, Dexter Fowler led off the game with a home run for Chicago off Kluber, becoming the first player ever to hit a lead-off home run in a World Series Game 7. The Indians tied the game in the bottom of the third inning with an RBI single by Carlos Santana after Coco Crisp doubled and advanced to third on a Roberto Perez sacrifice bunt. The Cubs scored two runs in the fourth inning with a sacrifice fly by Addison Russell Chris Bryant running aggressively to tag up from third on the short fly ball and slide under the tag at home and a double by Wilson Contreras. To start the fifth inning, Javier Baez hit a home run to center making it 4–1 on the first pitch he saw to knock Kluber out of the game. ALCS MVP Andrew Miller came on in relief and gave up a walk to Bryant and RBI single to Anthony Rizzo to push the lead to 5–1 Bryant's aggressiveness again instrumental as he was attempting to steal second on the hit, allowing him to score all the way from first. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Hendricks retired the first two batters. A two-out walk to Santana persuaded Joe Madden to relieve his starter. This move, along with others throughout the series, would be highly criticized afterward, as it appeared to some that Hendricks was pulled out too soon. Madden also drew criticism for having Javier Baez attempt a squeeze bunt with two strikes and Jason Hayward on third base in the ninth inning. Baez bunted the pitch foul for strike three. John Lester, who had started games one and five, came on in relief for the first time since the 2007 ALCS, coincidentally also against the Indians. David Ross committed a throwing error that allowed Jason Kipnis to reach base and put runners on second and third. 
A wild pitch that ricocheted off Ross's helmet allowed Santana and Kipnis to score, narrowing the Cubs' lead to 5–3. To atone for his blunders, the 39-year-old Ross hit a home run to center, in his last official at bat of his career, in the top of the sixth to make it a 6–3 game, becoming the oldest player to hit a home run in a World Series Game 7. Lester retired the first two batters in the eighth inning, but was pulled after a Jose Ramirez single. Madden opted to use Araldus Chapman, who had thrown 42 pitches in Game 5 and was used in Game 6 despite the fact that the Cubs had already built a large lead. Brandon Geyer promptly hit a run scoring double off Chapman, making the score 6 4. The next batter was Indians center fielder Rajai Davis, who had hit 55 career home runs in 11 seasons entering this game, and who was hitting .132 in the postseason up to that point. Davis hit a dramatic two-run home run off Chapman, just barely clearing the left field wall and the left field foul pole, scoring Geyer and tying the game, making the score 6–6. Davis's home run was the latest occurring game tying home run in World Series Game 7 history. Many fans and Chapman himself believe he blew the lead due to his unnecessary use in Game 6. Chapman, 28, said he felt a little different in Game 7 and that fatigue affected him. The Cubs squandered a scoring chance in the top of the ninth. David Ross led off with a walk and Jason Hayward grounded into a fielder's choice to take pinch runner Chris Coughlin off the bases. Hayward stole second and advanced to third on a throw to second by Jan Gomez that got away from Kipnis. Javier Baez attempted a bunt with two strikes, fouling it off for the second out. Dexter Fowler would eventually ground out to end the top of the ninth. Araldus Chapman returned to the mound for the bottom of the ninth and promptly retired the Indians in order, facing Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis, and Francisco Lindor, the Indians won, two, and three hitters. With the game tied 6–6 after nine innings, a sudden cloudburst resulted in a 17-minute rain delay. During the delay, Cubs right fielder Jason Hayward called his teammates into a weight room behind Chicago's dugout and told them, "'We're the best team in baseball, for a reason. Stick together and we're going to win this game.'" When play resumed in the top of the tenth, Kyle Schwaber led off with a single off Brian Shaw to right and was replaced by pinch runner Albert Almora. Chris Bryant then hit a deep fly ball to center, and Almora tagged up to second base, in what was called the "...saviest baserunning play of the season." After an intentional walk to Anthony Rizzo, Ben Zobrist stepped up to the plate. Zobrist had been 0 for 4 in the game but he delivered a clutch RBI double into the left field corner, scoring Almora, and breaking the tie, making the score 7–6. Zobrist later said, "'I was just battling, grinding up there. Fortunately, that last one he left over the plate and up to where I could just slap it down the line, and that was all I was trying to do.'" After another intentional walk to Addison Russell, Miguel Montero, who had replaced Ross at catcher and was hitting just .091 in the postseason, singled into left, scoring Rizzo and making the score 8–6. Trevor Bauer, the loser of games 2 and 5, relieved Shaw and got out of the bases loaded jam by striking out Hayward and retiring Baez on a flyout to escape further damage. Carl Edwards Jr. was called on to finish off the Indians in the bottom of the tenth, but after retiring the first two hitters Mike Napoli and Jose Ramirez, he walked Brandon Geyer, who took second base on defensive indifference. Rajai Davis, following up on his eighth-inning heroics, lined a single to center, making it a one-run game, and the score 8–7. Madden called on Mike Montgomery, who had zero career saves. Montgomery retired Michael Martinez who had scored the game-winning run in Game 3 with an infield grounder fielded by Bryant, who threw to Rizzo. This ended the game and the World Series, with the Cubs winning the series and ending their 108-year World Series championship drought. 
Zobrist was awarded the World Series MVP award after hitting .357 in the series and delivering the go-ahead hit. Topic: <laughs> After Game Seven. Rizzo called the rain delay the most important thing to happen to the Chicago Cubs in the past 100 years. I don't think there's any way we win the game without it." Cubs president Theo Epstein said that when he heard about the meeting called by Hayward, "...right then I thought, we're winning this game." The Cubs became the first team to come back from a 3–1 deficit to win the series since the 1985 Kansas City Royals. They were also the first since the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates to do so while winning games 6 and 7 on the road, and the second team since the 1979 Pirates to win game 7 as the visiting team, with the 2014 San Francisco Giants also having achieved that feat in Kansas City. Almost one year later, the 2017 Houston Astros did the same thing in Los Angeles. With the Game 7 victory, Joe Madden is 3–0 in postseason series against Terry Francona, having also won the 2008 ALCS and the 2013 wild card game against him. Game 7 was the 60th extra inning game in World Series history as well as the first extra inning Game 7 won by the road team. In the previous four times in 1912, 1924, 1991 and 1997, the home team won all four extra inning Game 7s. <laughs> Game 8 Composite line score 2016 World Series 4 Chicago Cubs beat Cleveland Indians Broadcasting Television Fox televised the series in the United States, under contract with Major League Baseball giving it exclusive rights to the World Series through 2021. Joe Buck was the network's play-by-play -play announcer, with John Smoltz as color commentator and Ken Rosenthal and Tom Verducci as field reporters. Fox Deportes also aired the series and provided a Spanish-language simulcast over the air via Fox's SAP Audio, with Carlos Alvarez and Duana Sanchez announcing, Sportsnet in English and RDs in French televised the series in Canada. Sportsnet used the MLB International feed produced by the MLB Network. Matt Vaskersian was MLB International's play by play announcer with the Toronto Blue Jays play by play announcer Buck Martinez as their color analyst and MLB Network correspondent Lauren Shahadi and analyst Mark DeRosa as field reporters. Alain Usero and former Montreal Expos player Mark Griffin handled the French language telecast for RDs. BT Sport televised the series Live in the United Kingdom and Ireland. WAPA-TV transmitted the series to Puerto Rico, with Rafael Bracero at the helm of the station's sports commentary of the series. Ratings Initial reports often utilize fast national ratings, which are subject to revision. Game 7 had over 40 million viewers, the largest audience for a baseball game since Game 7 of the 1991 World Series, while the series as a whole was the first to average double-digit ratings nationally since 2009. <laughs> Radio ESPN Radio's national network covered the World Series through affiliated stations, with Dan Schulman providing the play-by-play -play and Aaron Boone serving as color analyst. Tampa Bay Rays pitcher Chris Archer appeared as a guest analyst for select innings of Games 1 and 2. Locally, the team's flagship stations broadcast the series with their regular announcers. 
In Cleveland, WTAM and WMMS carried the Indians play-by-play -play with Tom Hamilton and Jim Rosenhaus, while in Chicago, WSCR carried the Cubs play-by-play -play with Pat Hughes, Ron Kumar, and Len Casper. The affiliate stations of the team's regional radio networks were contractually obligated to carry the national ESPN radio feed, even so, since both WSCR and WTAM are clear channel stations, most of the eastern and midwestern United States was able to hear the local broadcasts. Celebration. Following the team's win in Game 7, Cubs fans congregated outside of Wrigley Field and the surrounding Wrigleyville neighborhood to celebrate the championship. On November 4, the team's victory parade began at Wrigley Field and headed down Lake Shore Drive and Michigan Avenue at downtown for a noon rally at Grant Park. Country singer Brett Eldredge sang a cover of, "'Go, Cubs, Go!' during the rally. The city of Chicago estimated that over 5 million people attended the World Series parade and rally celebration, which would make it one of the largest human gatherings in history. After the season, the Cubs chose to make two traditional White House visits during then-President and White Sox fan, Barack Obama's final week in office on January 16, 2017, and during President Donald Trump's tenure on June 28, 2017. See also List of World Series champions Curse of the Billy Goat Curse of Rocky Colavito 2016 Japan Series 2016 Korean Series <laughs>